According to the Hair on Fire media out there chasing ambulances down Pennsylvania Avenue, there's been a report of workplace violence in a large white residence. What we talked about was a possible analogy between what we're seeing in the president and, and studies of violence and acting out, particularly workplace violence. The question we have to ask ourselves from a behavioral uh, sense is, are we watching a president essentially on, on his way to a, what we call a flashpoint? And, and are we now beginning to see him act out in the form of purging and mass firing and completely not listening to any logic? Are we essentially watching a workplace violence incident play out at the highest level of our government? And is he acting out now? And where does this go, if I'm right about that? Can I say holy crap? That might be the most insane thing ever said on MSNBC, and they employ Chris Matthews. Mm. You wonder why America thinks the media is less trustworthy than lawn darts? It's because they seriously entertain ideas like that. Firing someone is now workplace violence? Mm. You know, maybe it feels like that for the non-skilled people in the media who know they can't be employed anywhere else except maybe a carnival dunk tank. They never get fired. They only fail up the primetime lineup until they get jobs running CNN. Yet these are the same clowns who lied that Trump called immigrants animals when it was MS-13. How predictable. These goofs were more offended over calling killer thugs animals than the acts by the gangs themselves. But that's the media's M.O. Everything is a crisis except the actual crisis. You know, we've all had a friend who, when the booze ran out at a party, would drink from abandoned cups and polish <laughs> off the Listerine. That's the media. With the collusion <laughs> keg run dry, they're now desperately looking for anything to numb the pain. So now we're back to Trump's personality again. He's mean, unstable. When he doesn't like a situation, he changes it. And did you hear? He fires people. I once worked for somebody like that. In fact, she fired me. But that's what bosses do in the real world. The real world. The media should check it out sometime. It's really the only show in town, and they can't stand it because they wouldn't last a minute. All right, dang, and firing is now workplace violence. I guess we can't fire people anymore. We're safe. We're safe. <laughs> We're safe. Yes. I'm, I'm mad at you about the Golden Girls song, by the way. It reminds me of, be, of watching Golden Girls reruns in college and eating nachos bel grande every day, and uh -huh. I was orca fat. So thanks, Greg, <laughs> for bringing back that memory. Number two, orca this fat. is the classic laziness of people in the media because they would rather stand in front of their bathroom mirror and rehearse their newest sneer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and a facial expression of disgust at whatever Trump was doing that day or their fa perfect their glottal stop of, oh, 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 where it's just, you, the audience can kind of hear it when their guest is talking, but not really, but they, they are showing how appalled they are at President Trump. They don't have to do any thinking. What they was just, that word? Glottal stop. Oh. <laughs> That's what that is? That's a glottal stop. Juan, <laughs> I bet Sorry you... about the spittle on your dad. No, I, you know, oh, anytime you can educate me, Dagan, I'm all for it. You know, the Golden Girls, thank you for being a friend, Juan. Yeah. I think as a friend, you should agree with Dagan on all of this. You know, my <laughs> wife has a sign in the kitchen that says, Sar sarcasm served daily. <laughs> I think that's you. Uh, because to me, uh, one, Trump firing people from ICE the Secretary of Homeland Security, the Secret Service. I just think at some point, you know, uh, that's a lot of people in, for but one you, day. But remember, he ran The Apprentice. How should we be surprised? Well, I don't think we're doing The Apprentice. I think we're doing the United States of America. But I, let me just say, okay. in general, Trump is like the little boy that cries wolf, right? He said, oh, my gosh, we got a caravan coming. We got an invasion of MS-13 and terrorists. And it happens. And, it, and then it doesn't happen. Everybody <laughs> says, happened. oh, we shut down the government. Everybody says, what, 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 what crisis? And then we have a real humanitarian crisis occur. But, of course, he cried wolf first. And now people are like, well, there is a real crisis. But he's creating the crisis with... It's 103,000 illegal crossings. No, wait, 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 wait. Well, listen to what Juan just said. Juan said there was never any crisis. There was And now a... there is a crisis yeah, that Trump humanitarian... created. Yeah, a humanitarian <laughs> crisis. Okay. It's because Trump created the crisis. He's the one, the he's the one who is separating families, you know, children from okay. parents. He's yeah. the one who says, let's cut the aid to Central American countries where we could try to deal with this issue. He's the one that talks about a wall... He's the one that says, let's How end birth How does that create a right. crisis? Well, you know what, Greg? He's trying to create more, a solution. Let me just say, if you want a solution, let's look at the problem. The problem is, right now, in terms of illegal immigration, you have more Asians coming into the United States illegally so the than you do Hispanics. Want. No, the I'm just saying, let's look at it Juan, honestly. Don't go there. <laughs>
Let's, let's, actually, let's, I mean, that's the, and visas, let's look at the real issue. Instead, right. you want to talk about a wall. 103,000 okay. illegal crossings, Jesse. Yeah, yes. it's, it's, in an, March. it's, it's, March. it's at a 12 year high. Yeah. Juan doesn't want to have the conversation because it's an uncomfortable conversation. I'm willing to have, I and the rest of the it. media doesn't want to have this Ugh. conversation. The conversation is, how many refugees are we willing to absorb in this country? Yeah, how many migrants is the United States economy willing to take? How many unskilled workers are we going to take into this country and not talk about it? Because the media doesn't want to talk about it. All of these unskilled workers, refugees, migrants, they don't go to gated communities. They don't go to Nancy Pelosi's neighborhood. They go to blue collar neighborhoods. What does that do to the hospital system? What does it do to real estate prices? What does it do to uh, school districts, to American citizens and their wages? I'm asking the questions, and if you ask this question, they call you a racist. <laughs> You're not allowed to have this conversation oh. in this country. And what the media does is they distort the reality. They either don't want to cover the crisis, or when they cover it, they lie about it. Here's a great example. We had Gloria on the other day, the Hispanic female Border Patrol agent down with the president who said strategically deployed walls work to reduce illegal immigration, and they reduce assaults on Border Patrol. Nancy Pelosi had just said walls are immoral and walls don't work. So why wouldn't the media play the glorious soundbite, take it to Nancy Pelosi and say, hey, Nancy, the expert on the ground, nonpartisan, says exactly the opposite of what you said. What's your reaction to that? But they don't do that because the media is colluding with the Democratic Party. So the Democrats don't have to act. They want open borders because it's going to help them politically and hurt the president. And right now, the crisis is hurting the country, and the media is helping that damage be done. All right, Dana, uh, what, care to weigh in on so, anything? Can I go back to the beginning? Yes, the workplace okay. violence? Yes, workplace violence. So first of all, anybody who serves in a political position in any administration serves at the pleasure of the president. If the president decides in the morning that that tie is not cutting it, but well, Dana, that, that tie I mean, would cut it. On, but <laughs> David's like, you know what? I don't like the way you said hello to me. You're gone. Oh. Right? You, you don't have to have a reason. Yes. Um, also, the media was disgusted by Secretary Kirsten Nielsen. Yes. They hated her. Right. They thought she had done a terrible job, that she was lying for the president, that she was complicit in all of these things. So now they want to defend her and say it's workplace <laughs> yeah. violence. Like, that's a little surprising. A point. Also, personnel is policy. Mm -hmm. Okay, the president's not happy with the policy. So he's changing the personnel. Will he yeah. get a better outcome? I don't know. But the other thing that they could have done is they could have had Gloria. They should have pushed that out. Ah. Instead, what do they do instead? They push Kirsten Nielsen out. <laughs> yeah. Rather than right. like pushing like all of their good stuff that they use. It is quite chaotic, and perhaps the new people will be able to get a, a handle on it. But what you're going to end up happening is instead of having policy making at the Congress, now you're going to have more confirmation hearings. Dana, just, the way you use your hands right now is a bit threatening. Are you, <laughs> you were moving your hands. And I, I, feel I don't think anyone would, would ever say that um, they wouldn't protect me from you. If I if I <laughs> used workplace violence, it would be justified. <laughs> By the way, Greg, did, so you, hear, did you hear what Dana said? Yes. What? Chaos. Disarray. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you, well, know? you know what? I wasn't listening because no. I have the cramps. <laughs> I do. I have Does the cramps. Hurt?